Massive restrictions on buying Shiba Inu across Coinbase are shaking up the crypto world, not just in the US, but globally. But what just happened? And what's triggering this frenzy? And how can we safeguard our Shiba Inu holdings from disappearing? Well, let me explain. Disclaimer. In recent developments, major concerns have surfaced regarding restrictions on Coinbase and depositing money to purchase cryptocurrencies like Shiba Inu. These restrictions have left many feeling frustrated and angry as they encounter barriers in their efforts to invest in digital assets. Have you ever felt like your financial freedom is being stifled by external forces? What if I told you that your ability to invest in Shiba Inu through Coinbase is being hindered by undisclosed restrictions? What are the motives behind these actions? And how do they impact the future of cryptocurrency adoption? Stick around as we uncover the answers to these pressing questions and shed light on the hidden forces shaping the crypto landscape. As frustrations mount, let's zoom in on a recent tweet from a crypto investor expressing their dismay after Chase Bank blocked their deposit to Coinbase. This incident highlights the hurdles individuals face when attempting to engage in cryptocurrency transactions, particularly through platforms like Coinbase. But this issue isn't isolated to a single bank or region. A quick glance at the comments section beneath this tweet reveals a chorus of voices echoing similar encounters with banking restrictions on crypto transactions, not only in the US but across the globe. And imagine this. You're eager to seize an investment opportunity, but when you try to deposit funds into your Coinbase account, your bank intervenes, citing vague reasons about preventing crypto scams. You're left frustrated, your financial aspirations thwarted by opaque regulations and barriers imposed by traditional financial institutions. This scenario isn't hypothetical. It's a reality faced by countless individuals seeking to participate in the burgeoning world of cryptocurrency. And all of these restrictions sparked something very interesting. Let's turn our attention to a significant event, the recent massive withdrawal of Shiba Inu tokens from Coinbase. Etherscan data reveals that an unidentified wallet has withdrawn a staggering 225 billion Shiba Inu tokens worth over $2 million from the prominent U.S. crypto exchange. This withdrawal, executed in two transactions, raises questions about its motivations. But what drives such a substantial withdrawal? Many speculate that individuals are growing increasingly wary of holding their Shiba Inu tokens on centralized exchanges like Coinbase. Concerns about such restrictions that we talked about a minute ago prompt investors to seek alternative storage methods, such as decentralized wallets. But what makes me think that this withdrawal wasn't merely a coincidence? Interestingly, the timing of this large-scale withdrawal aligns with a period of relative stability in the Shiba Inu price. Typically, significant withdrawals coincide with market volatility or adverse news events. However, in this case, the Shiba Inu price remained relatively steady, suggesting that the withdrawal may be driven by factors unrelated to the cryptocurrency itself. But the arisen fear that these restrictions on Coinbase will lead to something even bigger. But this is where things get interesting. This isn't just about Coinbase. It's a broader trend affecting various crypto exchanges. Picture this. Since November, over 300 trillion Shiba Inu tokens have been pulled out from these platforms. Now, that's not just a drop in the ocean. It's more than half of the entire supply of Shiba Inu tokens out there. Imagine if that were dollars or cents in your wallet. It's a huge chunk. This massive movement reflects a real change in how people feel about keeping their crypto on these exchanges. It's like everyone suddenly decided they'd rather stash their cash under their mattress than trust it to the bank. But now, let's address the elephant in the room. Do all these restrictions really make sense? Well, let's take a closer look. Coinbase recently conducted a survey on American cryptocurrency ownership, and the results are eye-opening. According to their findings, a majority of American crypto holders express discontent with the existing financial system. In fact, almost three-quarters of Americans and the majority of crypto owners within the nation are not satisfied with the current fees that traditional banks charge for transactions. 71% of Americans and 9 in 10 Americans crypto owners want lower fees as part of a new, updated financial system. But here's where it gets interesting. Despite these frustrations, there's a palpable shift in attitudes towards cryptocurrency. It's no longer seen as just a speculative gamble, but as a viable alternative to the high fees and sluggish processing times offered by traditional banks. 76% of American crypto owners, those who know best, think crypto could make the financial system easier to access. This signals a significant change in mindset, with more people recognizing the potential for widespread adoption of cryptocurrencies 
like never before. So while the banks may try to put up roadblocks, it seems the tide is turning in favor of crypto. And here's the million dollar question. Why are banks cracking down on cryptocurrency investments when there's a growing interest and optimism towards their adoption? It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? Imagine if a restaurant banned a popular dish just as it started gaining widespread acclaim. It just doesn't make sense. One would think that banks, known for their knack for profitability, would recognize the changing tide and perhaps even embrace the opportunities presented by cryptocurrencies. It's like a taxi company refusing to acknowledge the rise of ride-sharing apps. They're missing out on a chance to adapt and thrive in a rapidly evolving landscape. But sadly, it seems some institutions are slow to catch on to the winds of change. They may be clinging to outdated notions of control and authority, failing to grasp the potential benefits that cryptocurrencies could offer both consumers and financial institutions themselves. It's a bit like clinging to a flip phone in the age of smartphones. You might be comfortable with what you know, but you're missing out on a world of possibilities. And here's something very interesting. Let's shift our focus to a tweet by a crypto news outlet that sheds further light on this perplexing situation. Coinbase says Americans could have saved $74 billion on credit card fees with blockchain. Here we have Coinbase, a major player in the cryptocurrency space, highlighting the potential savings that blockchain technology could offer. Yet, at the same time, we're witnessing traditional banks throwing up roadblocks and hindering individuals from harnessing these potential benefits. It's a stark contrast. On one hand, you have a forward-thinking approach that aims to revolutionize the financial landscape and save consumers billions in fees. And on the other, you have entrenched institutions stifling innovation and impeding progress. It's like being offered a shortcut through a traffic jam only to have someone stand in your way and insist you take the long route. It begs the question, why are traditional banks resisting change when the potential benefits are so clear? And when we consider the motives behind banks' restrictions on cryptocurrency transactions, a few possibilities come to mind. Firstly, there's the issue of control. Cryptocurrencies represent a paradigm shift in how financial transactions are conducted, bypassing traditional banking systems and their associated fees and regulations. For banks accustomed to being the gatekeepers of financial transactions, this loss of control may be unsettling, leading them to clamp down on crypto activities to maintain their grip on the market. Additionally, there's the potential threat that cryptocurrencies pose to traditional banking services. As more people turn to crypto for its lower fees, faster transactions, and decentralized nature, banks may fear losing customers and revenue streams. By restricting access to cryptocurrencies, they can steer individuals towards their own services, such as loans, credit cards, and savings accounts, where they have more control and can generate profits through interest and fees. It's a classic case of self-preservation. Banks are protecting their turf and ensuring their continued relevance in an increasingly digital and decentralized financial landscape. But as they dig in their heels, they risk alienating a growing number of customers who see crypto as the future of finance. Only time will tell whether they can adapt to this new reality or if they'll be left scrambling to catch up with the crypto revolution. But what is your opinion on that? Comment down below. I'd be eager to read your opinion. If you are curious to find more, then make sure to click on one of the videos you see on screen. And with that, we come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please like this video and don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please share this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news out there.